happy 4th of July to all you guys, and a very special happy 4th of July to all those who have served or are currently serving in our military. Thank you for sacrificing your time, sacrificing your life, so we have the freedom to live ours. Quick programming note here, this is going to be the only video for today. We'll be back to our regular schedule tomorrow. I have a feeling that the news is going to be slow today anyway, plus, I mean, you guys are going to be too busy today to watch me, so... We'll be back to our regular schedule tomorrow. You know, I think it's ironic. This very day last year, this same day last year, ESPN published a column on July 4th explaining why America sucks, how America is plagued by mythical racism. Now you fast forward 12 months later, and ESPN's going through one of the largest layoffs in company history. What a strange sense of irony. ESPN's been rejecting America for years, and now they're paying the price for it. America's rejecting them. Now, one person who's been unaffected by the layoffs, at least from a financial perspective, is Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. is catching a lot of heat, supposedly, mainly from his friends in the mainstream media. According to Stephen A. Smith, his friends in the media, they've turned on him. It's another classic case of the woke turning on the woke. With ESPN cutting their payroll, some shitfucks in the media are pointing to the exorbitant salary of Stephen A. Smith, questioning why he was not included in these layoffs. Well, that's what Stephen A.'s claiming anyway, but just for a second, we're going to assume this is true. If so, it's rather simple to understand. Like I said before, go look at the list of the 20 or so on-air personalities that ESPN fired. Look at the one thing they all have in common. None of them draw ratings. Jalen Rose, failure. His ESPN radio show with some dude named Jacoby was an unmitigated disaster. The only time Jalen Rose makes headlines is when he's expressing his fake outrage over a damn mountain that features the face of four white dudes. Mount Rushmore so racist. Matter of fact, all mountains are racist. Do not use the word mountain anymore. Father Jalen Rose has spoken. From now on, you must call them large protrusions that block the light of the beautiful sun Hostin. Max Kellerman, failure. Bamani Jones, huge embarrassing failure. Right now, ESPN's got one draw. The network has one star, Stephen A. Smith. He's the only talent at ESPN that demands attention. Hell, he's one of the only talents at the network. 95% of the people you see on ESPN, they are replaceable. You could replace Mina Kimes with Bobby Boucher and NFL Live ratings wouldn't decline. Yesterday, Stephen A. Smith, he addressed the layoffs at ESPN on his podcast. Now keep in mind, his podcast has absolutely no affiliation with the worldwide leader in Woke, which is why Stephen A's allowed to be this open and honest. Now the mainstream media, they are all over this story this morning, but once again, the media is focusing on the wrong thing. Most of the media is focusing on this false notion that Stephen A. Smith failed to mention Max Kellerman during his soliloquy. If they had done their jobs and listened to the entire podcast, they would have heard the mention of the newly unemployed Max Kellerman. But even if Stephen A. failed to mention his former partner in the butt bongo, that's not the story here. I mean, seriously, who gives a shit about Max Kellerman? You got to read between the lines. You got to understand what Stephen A. is really trying to say. And just to be clear, this is all pure speculation on my part. I don't have any inside information. I don't have the ability to get inside the mind of Stephen A. Smith. But I have been following this situation since I first predicted that Stephen A. was leaving ESPN, what was that, two or three years ago? My stance hasn't changed, and it was further cemented after I listened to his reaction to these layoffs. Stephen A. went down the list of everyone that ESPN fired. He professed his love for his former pastor father, Jalen Rose. Oh, my brother, I'm going to miss those sermons on mythical racism and the butt bongo that followed. He professed his love for the other brothers that are now collecting food stamps. Now, if you were looking for some diversity in this send-off, Stephen A's got you covered. He also professed his appreciation for the white man, Jeff Van Gundy, Neil Everett. He even included some unknown woman who used to sit behind the desk on SportsCenter when Malika Andrews was too busy protesting outside some church who against abortion. To me, though, all that was boring. I don't care what Stephen A feels about Jalen Rose. I already know how he feels. 
I want to know how Stephen A. feels about ESPN and his potential future at the network. Fortunately, he managed to pull back the curtain just a, just a little bit. I spliced together some of the key points that Stephen A. made. We're going to play them all at once, then I'll go over them with you. Watch for yourself. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I could be next. Don't ever, ever, ever in your life as a black person take anything for granted. I told you before, when black folks, when white folks catch a cold, black folks catch pneumonia. And the one thing that I can tell you about Stephen A, this ain't 2009. I really didn't see it coming. My eyes are always wide open now. I'm never comfortable. I never take anything for granted and I never assume that I'm safe. And first takes number one and been number one for 11 and a half plus years. Let me address something to some of the haters out there about me. Y'all can kiss my ass. And I'm talking about the people, I'm talking directly to the people in the industry who sat up there and said, why isn't Stephen A gone? Ladies and gentlemen, we got a few people at ESPN getting paid more than me. They don't have the number one show. They don't have the top ratings. They don't generate more revenue. How come y'all didn't bring their names up? And by the way, none of them are black. How come you didn't bring their names up? I wonder why. But never worry. I mean, never fear. My name might come up sometime in the near future for all I know. Others have been bought out. I'm, it's not beyond the realms of comprehension that I could be next. But if it happens, let me tell you what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't blame Disney. You shouldn't blame ESPN. First, let me dispute this false notion that he presented, or at least I think it's false, because Stephen A. Smith's trying to play the role of the victim. I'm coming after all you assholes who said I should lose my job. How come you don't have that same energy with the evil white man? There are white men here making more money than me. Damn it, how come y'all always come after the black man? <laughs> There are two reasons Stephen A's pointing this out. Number one, he's presenting himself as the victim to these unwarranted attacks. But this is complete bullshit. Until Stephen A pointed this out, I had no idea that he was being criticized for not being included in these layoffs by the media. I spent a few minutes this morning trying to find these media articles. I even looked through Twitter trying to find members of the media who were claiming that Stephen A should have been included in these layoffs. Imagine my surprise when I found none. Now, that doesn't mean it's not true. I'm just saying I couldn't find it. I was dumbfounded when he said this. I was confused when he tried to make himself the victim while tying in mythical racism because over the last few days, the only person I have seen relentlessly attacked by the mainstream media over these layoffs at ESPN is Pat McAfee. Not one time have I seen an article attacking Stephen A. Smith for his salary, but I've seen dozens of articles attacking Pat McAfee. Number two, here we go again with Stephen A. Smith talking about money, insinuating that he's underpaid. He talks about woke takes, supposedly being the number one show for the past 11 years. Number one in what? Woke Take doesn't even make the top 10 on cable. I guess Stephen A considers his show to be number one because he beats Undisputedly Woke with Skippy Bebe and his former lover Shay Shay. Hell, Woke Take, they're not even the number one show on ESPN. You heard Stephen A. Smith claim that he could be next in these layoffs. These layoffs at ESPN, they're ongoing. Seems like every day another on-air talent joins their former colleagues in the line for food stamps. Perhaps Stephen A. is legitimately shook. Perhaps he thinks the classic from Mob Deep was written about him. Normally, when ESPN has a round of layoffs, they target a, a certain demographic, the evil white man. More specifically, the older evil white man. This time around, though, there were a few shit fucks that were included. It's not like ESPN wanted to suspend the woke welfare of shit fucks like Jalen Rose and Bamani Jones. They simply ran into a situation where they'd already fired all the old white dudes. Stephen A claimed that he could be next and that he's prepared this time. His eyes are wide open. He referenced what happened to him in 2009 when he was fired by ESPN and essentially blackballed from the mainstream media. He's not going to put himself into a situation where something like that happens to him again and he's not ready for it. To me, to me, that's all hyperbole. 
Stephen A. Smith knows that ESPN's not letting him go. Hell, he's known this for months. Back in April, the New York Post reported that Stephen A. Smith would not be included in these layoffs. I think what Stephen A. Smith is doing here, he is laying the foundation for his eventual departure from ESPN. If you've been following this channel for a while, then you know that Stephen A. Smith does this same thing a couple of times every year. He gives people these subtle reminders that his days at ESPN could be numbered. Remember last summer when he admitted that he wants to leave the world of sports and broaden the focus of his brand? He mentioned his dreams of becoming a late night host on numerous occasions. Stephen A. has complained about being underpaid at ESPN. And look, he's not wrong. Both Joe Buck and Troy Aikman, they make significantly more than Stephen A. Smith. They only work for ESPN, what, 15, 16 times a year? You think Stephen A. sees the money that ESPN just gave Pat McAfee and doesn't get pissed off about it? Just think about it. Put yourself in his shoes. You're the foundation. You're the face of the network. Spent the last 10 years carrying ESPN essentially by yourself. And it's not just woke take. They ask you to do Sports Center. They put you on NFL shows. You're the face of their NBA coverage. They ask you to cover major UFC events where you routinely embarrass yourself because you know nothing about the UFC. And that's not a knock against Stephen A. Smith. It's just the truth. I think he feels undervalued. I think he feels underappreciated. Stephen A. launching his podcast outside the ESPN umbrella, that is no accident. He could have had his podcast featured and promoted on ESPN's YouTube channel that's got almost 10 million subscribers, but he wanted something of his own. He wanted an insurance policy just in case something happened. I'm telling you like I've told you before. Stephen A. Smith is laying the foundation to leave ESPN. I'm starting to get this feeling that Stephen A's burnt out. In his eyes, he sees ESPN paying all these white dudes and wonders why they're not paying him. I would imagine he's brought this up behind the scenes, maybe even asked for a raise on his contract and he was denied. But after a while, it's no longer about the money. Once you reach the point of no return where you're underappreciated, underpaid, you're burnt out, there's no amount of money that can bring you back. I think Stephen A. Smith has reached that point. Overworked, underpaid. Business relationships, they are no different than personal relationships. I'm sure some of you guys have been through a divorce. I'm sure some of you guys have actually initiated the divorce. Think about everything that had to happen to get you to that point. These small instances that just added up over a number of years until you eventually reach the point where no matter what your husband or wife does or says, no matter what they offer, you're done. I believe that's where Stephen A. Smith is with ESPN. Done. Unfortunately for him, his contract, I think, has another 18 months on it, but I wouldn't be surprised if he finds a way out sooner. But give me your thoughts. Was this another subtle message from Stephen A. Smith about his potential exit from ESPN? Or do you think I'm reading too much into this? To be fair, I mean, I could be, but this seems to happen several times every year with Stephen A. Smith, where he drops these little hints about his exit from ESPN. But you let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.